Muy buenas tardes chicos, soy Traxxon, se bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo resumen mensual de, de Victoria 3. Sinceramente estoy por esperar a que lo lancen oficialmente, sale ahora a las 6 de la tarde y suele tener subtítulos en español. Pero siempre mola porque sacan nuevas imágenes y cositas que ver, ¿no? Entonces, vamos a echarle un vistacillo. Esta señora ha dicho que deja Paradox a final de marzo, creo. Han debido fichar en otra compañía. Victoria algo de gameplay. The UX, it stands for the use experience. It's how you interact with the game and how you feel when you play the game. It's everything, almost. Our goal with the UX in Victoria 3 is to make the game more approachable, which enables us to make the game even deeper and more complex. In order for us to do this, we have three UX pillars. The first one is the right information at the right time. The second one is clear feedback about cause and effect. And the third one is clearly separate actions from information. So how does it look in practice? First off, we have Nested Tooltips, as made famous by Crusader Kings 3. With Nested Tooltips, we can actually break down the information vale. into pieces. Vale, eso es la información que va saliendo al pasar el ratón por encima de ciertos, ciertas palabras, etc. Estilo lo que hay en Crusader Kings 3, efectivamente. One of the more challenging areas is to clearly show a value change over time. One way we do it is by the use of line graphs. One of the essential parts of the game loop is to see value that change over time. And we use these line graphs to help you keep track of what's going on. We also have two types of shards, pie shards and area shards. And we allow you to switch between them. Oh. If you don't feel like you want to Cambias entre las... all the shards and all the graphs yourself. Entre las estadísticas, tío, boy. For example, if you change the production method in a building, we show you the predicted earnings even before you take that action, so you know if it's good or not. Our map is gorgeous and we want to put more emphasis on it. We want you to interact with it. One way we do it is by putting the events on the map itself. Mola. Vemos los eventos en el mapa, que está en pasa en el CK3. Realmente, eh, con algunos, ¿no? Un poquito de gameplay estamos viendo, ¿eh? In combination with icons and heat maps, we can show you several layers of information. Bueno, son GIFs, ¿no, chavales? Another cool thing we do is that every action you take, you can take through our lens system. And they all come with their own map mode. It's basically like seeing the world from a specific... Distintos mapas para ver el juego. You already know what entity you want to perform an action on. You can just right-click it. Lastly, I want to talk about the accessibility options in Victoria 3. Mantenimiento de carreteras ponía por ahí. We want to enable everybody to play our game. Ojo. That's why we have included three different color blindness modes for text. And we are looking into more ways. Va el modo para daltonicos, celíacos visuales. Thank you. Que dije en el vídeo. Let's take a look at UI and get a sense of the look and feel of Victoria 3. Tetriero titiro. As is the case in all parts of the production of Victoria 3. Liberad la banda sonora, Paradox. We take inspiration here from the Romanticism art movement of the 1800s. The final one is detailed yet the Vale, nos van a enseñar un poquito la interfaz, ¿no? Give you a lot of the intricate designs and whatnot of the uh, various art movements that we're inspired by, but we don't want to overwhelm you or distract you from the actual information that you need to play the game. So how do these keywords relate to the user interface part of the game? And in fact, what do we mean by user interface? Uh, Tecnologías, ¿no? Academia. Planificación urbanística. Vale, 
around the edges, around the frame of the window, not to overwhelm you with the information that is happening inside the window. For the buttons, we've chosen to incorporate natural elements. Texture of wood. Porque se han inspirado en el Art Nouveau y han introducido distintos elementos vintage que decía alguien ayer en un comentario de YouTube. We've chosen to uh, avoid confirmation windows as much as possible, which means that often when you click a button, uh, the action happens right away, which means you need to be able to tell the difference between a navigational button and an action button. We differentiate between these two types of buttons uh, by playing with the frame, so you can tell which one is which. If there's a particular option that we would like to draw your attention to, we use a special kind of frame with more intricate border details. The final part of the user interface are icons, which are omnipresent throughout the game and used to uh, visualize certain states or things that we want to draw your attention to, or just representations of game mechanics. The level of detail used for these... Pero enseñándonos algo, ¿no? For various reasons. Buildings Ahí está. are very intricate, very detailed. They're like mini illustrations that are meant to set the mood for you. Ojo, las minas de sulfuro, ¿eh? eso tiene pinta que dar pasta, tío. Y las estaciones balleneras. Buah. Vamos a jugar con Canadá y reventarte la economía ahí, tío. Tecnología de iconos, por otro lado, pueden ir de either way. Pueden ser either be very concrete, like a stick of dynamite, o they can be more abstract, like the concept of academia. In either case, of course, we have to come up with a visual representation of this, which is concrete to you, which can sometimes be a little tricky. This is something we found out firsthand when trying to figure out a way to uh, represent the professions that are in the game with icons. What we ended up uh, choosing there was to go with the tools of the trade. Uh, so machinists, for example, we represent with an icon of a wrench, while servicemen we represent by a pair of shiny boots. Speaking of servicemen, one icon that appears in the game in many different contexts and sizes uh, is the icon for battalions. This is one of many uh, icons that we also have available as text icons, uh, such that they can appear in uh, text and tooltips, for example. However, they can also appear in much larger formats inside panels uh, or as indicators uh, elsewhere in the UI or even on the map. To ensure that these icons are recognizable and readable to the player at many different sizes, we work with simple parameters, uh, such as a few chosen colors uh, and very clean silhouettes. We also color code uh, these smaller icons uh, to make it clear if they denote, for example, a positive or negative connotation. Each interest group... Ajá, entiendo que rojo mal, verde bien, ¿no? Como siempre. That same color also appears in uh, pie charts... Pero cuando ves tu economía... Con colores rojos dices mal. Finally, one additional area where we use illustrations to convey meaning is in the tutorial. Here we found that instead of trying to represent el tutorial, se va a hacer con con Suecia. However, the infographic format that's commonly used today. Uh, is very clean and modern looking and we didn't feel that this fit for this game. Instead, we've taken inspiration from Victorian newspapers and blueprint illustrations to compose a new Segundo, eh, perdón. that is more suitable, uh, that both teaches you these concepts in an efficient way without breaking your immersion. The user interface is the part of the game that you're going to be spending the most of your time with. So we wanted to take that opportunity to really let you immerse yourself in Victorian era. Vintage and idyllic indeed. Now, are Estoy preguntando a ver si me dice alguien algo de Paradox si Suecia es el, es el país elegido para el tutorial. Porque no lo confirma en el diario de desarrollo, pero supongo que eso lo confirma. O igual hay varios tutoriales, ¿sabéis? Y va cambiando según lo que quieren enseñarte del juego. Imminent disasters and ongoing situations. You can think of them as being items on the government's agenda. For example, the Ottoman Empire finds itself in a series of journal entries that we call the Sick Man of Europe. Este evento está espectacular, eh. En este evento lo he visto antes, tío, está espectacular. Se ve muy bonito. And if you fail to transform the empire into a modern state, 
Si se han currado imágenes así para los eventos más importantes del juego, sacadita por parte de Paradox, ¿eh? yo creo. Cambio al socialismo, leyes de, de corn, creo que es como de trigo o de grano o algo así, y un golpe, ¿no? Y esto mola, ¿no? O sea, el hecho de que puedas hacer decisiones para un país según quien sea el señor de ese país. Eso está muy guapo, ¿eh? Por ejemplo, there may be complete conditions, fail conditions, timeouts, events that are contained within them and can fire when they're active. Departing from previous titles, there are very few pop-up events in Victoria 3. Instead, when an event fires, it pops up on, on, in, on the map and also in the outliner. This means that you can engage with events at your discretion. Victoria 3 is a very open-ended game with a lot of dynamic possibilities. Bueno, esto va a estar muy guay, ¿eh? A la, a la hora de darle variedad a las partidas y ver qué hacer, etc. Much more emergent experience. Claro, porque no hay sistema de misiones ni nada parecido en el Victoria 3. Muy chulo, tío. Molan las nuevas imágenes. Las tenemos por aquí, creo. Me quedo sobre todo con esta, tío. Este evento se ve espectacular. Este evento se ve espectacular, chicos. Y esto es lo que está ya en CK3 con, por ejemplo, cuando haces un banquete. Que puedes interactuar y ver quién está ahí dentro y tal. Creo que no hay mucha novedad visual más. Salvo los GIFs, que están muy guay, ¿no? Poco más que decir, chicos. Ahí están. Nos vemos en el siguiente vídeo. Chao, chao.